Welcome spiritual travellers, I'm Steve Bradshaw aka The Brad Monk and when I'm channeling I connect to my soul of the past who was a monk who travelled around sharing his spiritual journey and so he helps me to find and connect to what I call the soul inner voice which is basically the universe that gives us wisdom, insights, connections and frees me up to be able to help people on their journey. My mission is to connect and get every single one of you to experience this amazing world, what I call the world of enlightenment. Hello everybody, I hope you have got over the full moon that really affected my sleep the other day and basically I was googling mediumship questions because I always like to uh, see what people are thinking about and everything and so I found 14 questions that I thought was quite interesting and I'm going to share you with them today and see if we maybe you can resonate with some of the answers or maybe there's some questions that you may have had that you wanted answers for okay so let's have a look and go ahead so the first one was how can I learn how to develop medium abilities very good question so many people can do mediumship so many people were probably mediums in a past life but the secret to it all is trying to get that connection trying to build enough energy so that the spirit world can communicate with you and there's many different ways but the problem that most find is that your body has got all its lessons and um so when you think of a thought and your body doesn't like that idea it actually kicks your brain in and the secret to mediumship is switching off the brain getting connected getting the energy and so what i would say is the more you do mediumship the more you learn and that's why i created my packs to make it automatic when i first started i was probably was clearer with connection because i believed i was like a natural ability because obviously i did it before i just had to relearn what I knew already sort of thing and that's why a lot of mediums once they start to learn how to do it they start to put the blockages up because they start to think I have to do it a certain way spirit world will communicate with you in, in many different forms and so building up your senses um, finding the time to communicate understanding the messages working from the heart there's all different ways that you can become better with mediumship I mean one of my simple tasks is just building an energy box of nature helps my connection meditation helps me to get on that sort of level of connection with the spirit world and the soul which is primarily where the information is often coming from so because i channel i get it from the universe so i work through my soul or the inner energy within me which is already connected so it makes it easier i mean i can just tune in now you know and automatically i might see a couple of people there who might want to communicate with me it's that easy for me now but it's taking years of working like that taking years of, of switching the brain off and st stopping the brain from thinking and sometimes presuming the information that you get so anybody you know you can go to a spiritualist church a development group but really it's more to do with the experience and that's why i created my pack so that you, you can keep practicing and you can keep communicating with spirit and then it becomes easier you still worry about it you still wonder whether you gave them the right information and i've learned over the years that information is also added to what you tell them you know so you'll find that they think you say things but they're hearing the spirits as well so this is what i say to you this this is learning to trust and and believe and and just give what you get is the secret to it all you know the gift is the message because that is what is initially it's all about i got into this because i wanted to help people who struggled with people passing over because i lost my nan and i found that you know all the guilt and all the pain and all the worry is why i wanted to help others to to not feel like i felt that her last breath nearly killed me in the, the thought that I'd never see her again or communicate with her and so that's really what I got into mediumship for so I could help others in that pain and sorrow 
realise that when you let go of the pain and the guilt, you have the unconditional love. You have the magic of the connection then. You see magic memories and you feel all the good things connected to them. And so you never lose the connection to spirit or your loved ones. But in a human form, it's harder to recognise. And that's why I've created loads of exercises, loads of different ways, so that you can communicate with them. Most mediums struggle to communicate with their own loved ones because of their emotional attachment. And that is another key to why you may struggle to do mediumship. Because your body gets involved or your brain gets involved. With practice and meditation and energy, and building your energy up, it then becomes easier. And it becomes a lot quicker. Even creating your own place to work with is, a, is another way of being in the energy that spirit can communicate easier. Remember, it's not always like a godlike voice that talks to you. It sometimes is in your own head. So sometimes I sometimes think it's like your crown chakra, which is on top of your head, um, is basically this information is passed through that and then your brain interprets it. Or brain either gives what it gets, sort of thing. So there's many different ways because people some people say they're not they haven't got a voice box and so they're not speaking to you. Uh, it is your own voice sometimes. It can be. I've heard other voices out there, but it takes a lot of energy to do that. So, whichever way you believe that you're communicating, if the information is helping somebody, does it matter? Don't focus always on the proof. Focus on the message, because that's what they're here for. Okay, so let's go to number two. Number two is, what is my their wish for me, and how can I make it come true? The reason that um, I always think loved ones come through is to help you on your, is guidance. That's what I think a medium's job is, to guide you in the right direction, to find your own way on your spiritual path or your journey. So I, I always, when I communicate with loved ones, they're helping me to help myself and to help others. And so I can utilise my nan, um, who died in 1987, I think it was. Um, she helps with my groups. So when I'm doing development work, she comes and joins in. And it's brilliant energy. And so people can I can link to her and be able to give good messages. And I know when she's around because she gives me a shake, which is what she used to do on the earth. So I know when she's around or she wants to visit. I mean, she's even told me off because I don't do as many development classes so she can't get involved. So, you know, it's still, this the life is not finished just because they go over. They, they have an emotional lesson to let go of. You have an emotional lesson to let go of. They're part of your ancestry. They are helping you on your journey and you're helping them and so they work with your soul to to guide you to help you with certain things okay so i believe they just want you to be happy to enjoy life and that's why they help you in that way to clear your emotions okay number three who are my guiding spirits well like development wise i think we have guiding spirits and so each stage of your life of learning or, or relearning, as you might be already a medium without even knowing it. Um, so like a Tibetan monk gives you insights, a lady healer, Red Indian teaches you about nature and being connected from one to another, a philosopher and a warrior. These are the five that I felt came and joined and helped me out. And I didn't always know they were, but they sort of like help you to build your energies up and to understand the way and the philosophy and, and the way to work on your journey or, or to do mediumship. So that's what I think. I haven't got a particular guide because I know that I've also got a past life, one of my souls, that when he gets the book out, I know that he's going to give wonderful insights because he's already been on the spiritual journey. So he guides me on the journey. Um, but because I work with the universe, I try not to work with guides because I think the guide is like... Chinese whispers you, you know when when I was doing mediumship the last thing I wanted to need to go through about three or four um, guys their guys your guys and everything to get information because it just made it so complicated especially as sometimes a family member brought somebody through which then created another sort of situation and you learn this through the experience of how to communicate so guides I'm not 100% on because I think that's a human need because a lot of the times when I've spoke to people who needed guides is because 
they want confirmation that what they're saying is right. Well, you learn to follow your heart. If you feel good in your heart, you know that's a good message. You know, there's other ways to get confirmations without going through guides and then being able to blame the guide because, you know, that's more of a human. You're limiting yourself. Why, when you can connect to the whole universe and everything, do you want to connect to somebody who can connect to the universe? And, you know, why not get it direct? Okay, well, that's my opinion, but I'm sure everybody else has got their gatekeepers and, and the people that protect them and this, that and the other. You're always being guided, so by your soul so you know all right then so the next one is what messages do they have for me well that's similar really um their messages are really spiritual guidance on your path and guidance and helping you on your journey so it's similar sort of question there all right then the next one what are the signs of being a psychic medium okay so well for me once you learn the world of being a psychic and a medium, you suddenly see the signs have always been there. You know, and when you tap in, then all of a sudden, you can pick up on all these signs. The world changes. That's why I like the world of enlightenment, because once you get connected, use all your senses, become one with everything, you're always guided. There's always information for you. And you can get it in a crystal, you can get it in your house, you can get it when you're walking down the street. There's always signs to help you on your journey. It's whether you're open to them, which is the key, whether you want to know. So the more that I've been on my spiritual journey, the more actually I understand now. When somebody says something a little bit louder, or when something that I'm looking at looks a lot brighter, I know these are signs and messages. And so it's wonderful when you when you can link to all that because you get so much information and you see so many connections, you see where it comes from. So even when I have like issues or problems, I can see where it's come from in childhood, in past life, in the future, my vibration, which is creating, you know, my experience. So when I understand it's me that's creating it or me stopping me accessing certain things in life, life becomes so easier because I can see the bigger picture. And that is one of the key things I'll say to you. Mediumship is being the middle person. But eventually, when I come in a channeler, you then go to a next level of sort of information. Okay, next one. How can I get closure on an issue that wasn't resolved before the death? This is a guilt thing. And really, it's your body's experience of of healing so you know when when you when you have uh, lost somebody you think about what you're there for them at the end and in, in some cases the person might not want you there because they want they know that when they pass over if you see the last breath or whatever you'll be affected so there's all different scenarios of, and it's most of the guilt is about their death you know, um, if there's any issues you have with them, when they go over, they learn their lessons and they learn how they dealt with you, how they dealt with others, their impact on you and everything like that. And so they're in a different place and they're not so angry or maybe blaming you for stuff or can see the bigger picture to why they were blaming you, which what sometimes wasn't even your fault. So it's very interesting, all that. So what I would say to you really is, Learn to let go of the pain so you allow the unconditional love and the good memories to come through. That's what it's really all about. And you can do this. I can help you to, to cleanse this out. I think I've got one of my videos will do that as well. Okay. Linking with loved ones, I think it is. Okay. What do... Number eight... What do my loved ones think about the life choices I'm making? It's your journey, your choice. And I always find with choice and free will, you still get another opportunity. So nothing is wrong, nothing is right. It's just choices in life, you know. You know, if you choose, you choose to go down one road one day and it doesn't work. And then you choose to go down another road another day. And then you might go back to the road that you said you thought was a failure but actually then becomes clearer 
and easier to take. So the free will and choice, I think, is sometimes a detriment to our life because we have the automatic flow of our path and what we're doing, our part to play and everything. And I think sometimes choice and free will takes us away or other people take us away from, from enjoying life because we, our conditioning um, takes place and, you know, we don't always choose. That's why I say follow your heart, not your head, because your heart will give you the peace in life. It will give you the right thing to do, whereas your head is more about just the experience and the lessons and letting go of stuff that's stopping the body flowing. Okay, right then. Number nine, do you have any advice or guidance for me? Depending on who's actually uh, watching this video, my, my key things that's come through through my enlightenment is enjoy life. Because when you enjoy life, you feel closer to the universe. When you are happy, and happiness comes from you creating happiness. You know, it doesn't automatically always come. It's easier when you're in the flow of life or you're at peace with yourself or one thing or another. So my guidance is find your way. Find out who you are. Enjoy the journey. Whether it's a roller coaster or not, just enjoy it. And you'll find it easier when you enjoy it. That is the key more than anything because you then get the energy or you tap in more to what makes it enjoyable or what is is good in life and what makes you feel alive in the morning gets you up in the morning so that's my little guidance for you number 10 are they still angry with me no no because they, when they see the bigger picture over there they see all aspects of what they created what you created and everything so i never find that spirit world is ever really angry with anybody and if you get a message from the spirit world and the person is acting the same as what they did on the earth. That is just them probably showing you what they were like and, and everything like that. So I don't think spirit are angry. It's more likely if they're still connected to the earth that they become angry because they, they're, they're still at the emotional attachment that's keeping them here. So there might be something that they need to let go of themselves. And you're the only person that can help them. So to be angry with you is not going to help them. So what's the, what's the point? Okay, number 11. I want to apologise for something I did and said when they were alive. What is their response? I, you know, a lot of people talk to pictures. A lot of people just write a little message. This is another way of, of letting go of your own emotional state and also speaking to them. They will get the message. Um, not always straight away, but they will get the message. So write it down and burn it. They will get the message talk to the pictures take time out they'll understand and so and then you might even get a message back from them and it might be a music or confirmation or a symbol or something to let you know that they're around and they're helping you uh, and then all of a sudden you see the signs around you okay so 12 what are the specific signs that indicate they are with me. The main areas that they get is music, um, or people will speak their name or speak of them, um, or you will come across an object that reminds you of them. There's all these little ways of signs that are around you. Um, it might get a tingle on your body, you might get a gush of wind. There's all sorts of ways that they can communicate with you. So look out for your sign, or even do one of my videos where you sit down and actually get them to give you a sign so you know when they're around a symbol i should say you know when they're around and when they're communicating with you okay 13. oh the page has gone a bit funny what can i do to cope with this painful loss so i can move on with my life Because of I had many uh, lived in a pub, so I have many people have passed on. Um, so to, I think the pain is necessary for us to understand the bigger picture. They were part of our lives for a certain time. They created the life that we have. They helped us. And so 
would you be angry or or that they didn't spend that time with us and often the cases i found that we'll we'll meet them again a lot of the vow family and friends are people that we meet many times so you never really lose them you just have different lives with them and different ways of living those lives with them so i don't really see death as death i see it as just another journey that we will take another lifetime of many lifetimes that we will share with the people and have great memories and it's the memories that you you try to cling on to because they they give you the understanding of your journey so i've got loads of friends that i do not communicate with now doesn't mean i don't love them doesn't mean that they weren't magic in my lives and they're not even dead some are actually but you know but they contributed they helped me to evolve into the person i am and i thank them for that and i see when you see the journey as being just that then you never really lose anyone they're always in your heart because you always have memories and you always have that connection and you can always communicate with them even if they're moved on and so that is the understanding really okay last but not least if I can read it because my eyesight's not the best today. 14. What are special things they want me to know? Yeah, that's a bit of a strange question. Um, I will link to the page where the, obviously the person answered these questions as well. I just thought these questions would be interesting. I think they want you to realise that you are special in your contribution, the, the part you play, the enjoyment in life your connection to nature to people i think that's what they want you to really understand because that is playing your part is your connection to the universe being who you are is your part to play and so it relieves you of all the lessons and traumas and and stuff and makes life easier for you to flow and understand and so so just play your part that's that's the special gift that they're giving to you that they contributed in making you to the person you are so that you can share in that experience okay look out for more i'm sorry i've been a bit quiet at the moment but this isolation has really helped me to to refocus on what areas i want to do and this came up today that um, some mediumship questions so i hope you enjoyed it hope you see it again i've got over 400 videos so dive in Enjoy the experience. Any questions, anything you want me to help you with, then give me a shout.